Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you all for being here. Um, actually, the, my question, the first one I was going to have is along the line exactly that we've just been discussing. Because from what I've been hearing uh, out in the community when we're hearing it, is we seem to have heard a lot about the risk, health risk, for young youth under a certain age uh, uh, and the need for more education on that end. But there seems to be maybe a need for more education on the consequence of the law. And we're seeing it because a lot of the people that are out there that, and that this is not just the youth as much as the adults, if I'm hearing that saying, no, there's no problem with driving it and there's no risk. Uh, this is just going to make everything legal that I'm already doing, whether it's growing it, whether it's smoking it in places where they shouldn't, whether it's driving or whatever. So I, I totally um, understand what you're saying because we're hearing the same, I'm hearing the same thing out there when I'm going. But I want to go, my other question that I want to go to uh, is on the homegrown. Um, and I'm hoping somebody will give us a little bit of clarification on it. Um, in past witnesses that we've had a little while back, um, we have uh, already heard and we know that uh, on the homegrown and some of the certain decisions of age-wise has been set, uh, the provincial governments have the right to basically set the, the limits. But we've also seen and heard that the province of Quebec and I think Manitoba uh, have already passed legislation that uh, the plants will not be allowed uh, in their provinces to be uh, grown. And we've also heard, if I remember, I think it was the city of Richmond, B.C., where they have uh, taken a position where marijuana will not be legal within their, um, their jurisdiction of the municipality. And because of that, we're also hearing that from other witnesses that there could be a potential of court challenges coming up because of that. I just want to know if uh, you could give me your point of view on that, and anyone can answer. Okay. Who wants to start? Okay, Mr. Friedman. Sure. Um, that engages a different part of the Constitution than criminal lawyers usually work with, uh, namely not the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, but the Constitution Act. Uh, what we have here is cannabis, which is regulated, uh, in, at least in this sphere, has been in the past regulated, uh, among other heads, but uh, under the criminal law. Um, it's interesting because the Cannabis Act doesn't actually legalize marijuana in that sense. It actually simply provides for offenses and other penalties. So there's no doubt uh, that if municipalities uh, or provinces attempted to quote unquote criminalize it, they can't criminalize it because they can't create criminal offenses, uh, that that would lead to endless constitutional challenges. But one of the reasons that happens is the way the law is presently framed is, you know, notwithstanding the, the purposive statements to talk about the purpose of it being to legalize and regulate, the purpose is actually just to prohibit, but only to prohibit certain areas. Uh, that's the type of thing that could have been uh, addressed by drafting the law differently, by drafting the law to make it clear that the substance is legal and then building upon that. Uh, by taking the prohibitionist view of, of the legislation, and it's what we have here and it, it, it ought to pass because it's better than what we have now, yeah, it absolutely opens the door for those types of conflicts and challenges. Okay, anyone else uh, on the video screen? Mr. Boyd. Yeah, I would just add that the risk of um, not allowing any kind of home growing is that you may create an incentive for a black market. I'm not sure that's too likely, given the kinds of comments that we've heard to date, that, uh, that most people will prefer to purchase. And if the price is set at a reasonable level, that's not going to be an issue. Um, we're we're going to have a problem. I mean, Richmond, as you point out, has decided they're not going to have retail sales. That's not, in the context of the lower mainland in British Columbia, that's not going to create huge incentives for a black market because, it, you know, all of the bordering jurisdictions, there will be access and there won't be any criminalization of, of possession of licit cannabis within Richmond. They've just decided they don't want to have any retail outlets. And municipalities have that right. It's a land use issue and they can, and, and we're going to see something of a patchwork quilt these a bit a bit like alcohol wet and dry you know, we're, 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 we're back to that to kind of a regime and it's just going to take time and this will sort itself out and there will be some constitutional challenges yeah i would think so <laughs> okay anybody else on this uh all right i think that's pretty much the end of your time thank you very much senator